And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Claim Kingdoms Royal Edition. Now this is based on Claim Kingdoms, which is uh, based on Claim, and honestly, I've not played any of this stuff that all this is based on, but I love this cover here with all these different faces and fantasy races, and this is one of those games where you place tiles down and they affect the tiles around them, and that's the concept that I tend to enjoy, usually. Um, there's a few games that I'm not a big fan of that in, but I like the idea of special powers, placing tiles down, and seeing what happens. Let's take a closer look. In this game, players are going to use one board for each player, and each board has two sides, so you can pick and choose, and honestly, you can put them any way you want, as long as they're touching each other. I just made a nice, perfect square for purposes here. This would be a four-player game. You're then going to pick seven, eight, or nine factions based on the number of players, and so each faction has its own deck of cards here. What you'll do is you're going to take these decks, the ones that you pick, you're going to shuffle them together. You're going to place one somewhere on the board, three next to the deck, and then on top of different ruin space on the board, you're going to put random treasure cards on those. Each player is going to draw a card into their hand, and then on a player's turn, they're going to play a card, activate the power on that card, and then take a new card. So when you play a card, it needs to be adjacent to a card that's already on the board. Once you play the card, you're going to put a follower of your color on that card to show that you control that card. And it also counts to you controlling a board. The different cards, you're going to first look at the terrain of where you place the card. Different terrains are going to do different things. For example, if you place on a castle, you'll get a point. If you place in a swamp, you'll lose a point. If you place on the windmill down here, for example, you would get to put two followers on your card. There are some spots you can't put people like this right here. Um, and if you go on top of a treasure card, you're going to reveal the treasure card, which will be a random thing. In this case, it gives me an extra follower that I could put on any card I want, but some of them give you, there's treasure chests that give you two points and traps that make you lose a point. So once you deal with the terrain, then you're going to activate the special power of that particular species that you put down. So this is a, no a gnome. So when I play a gnome, I'll score one point, and we keep track of that on the point scoring thing over here. And then after I score that point, then, uh, let's see, the gnome, I can place an extra follower from my hand on an adjacent card. So I can put a follower here on the giant. Or if I put it next to one of my own people, I'll be able to put another follower on that person there. Then you'll take a new card, so you'll take one of the face-up cards over here, or draw from the top of the deck, and then you'll fill it to three cards, which it could have more than three cards, because there are different things. For example, if you play this Ice Queen here, the Ice Queen will add two more cards to the face-up display. There are all sorts of different special abilities. I don't have time to go through all of them, but some of them will attack other cards. Some of them will get rid of cards. The phoenix here, for example, there can only ever be three phoenixes in play. So if you play a fourth one, then the one, you pick one of the other ones to go away. Uh, some of them will kill cards, followers, move things, etc. The game ends when somebody runs out of followers or when the draw deck runs out of cards or the maps are completely filled. At that point, you're going to score. Each map is going to give a certain number of victory points to first and second place to whomever has the most followers on that map. So for example, this map here, pretty simple, red has the most, and then second would be yellow. You're also going to score for each of the fantasy groups here. So for example, whoever has the most on giants is going to get first place is going to get eight points. So all these points are going to be added together to any points you may have scored over the course of the game, and whoever has the most is the winner. So let's take a look at components here. Now, there is a variant that you can play without the maps, but you can see, really, it is 
way more busy, I think, with the maps, and it's much cleaner without them. Normally, I like boards because the grids help keep everything in place, but in this case, using the maps, it also, also the maps add in lots of special rules and victory points for the map, so that does change how the game plays, but it's kind of clean in that regard. The artwork for the game, this is, you know, from the Miko, is great artwork. I've already shown you some of the cards, but I like the different cards. I like the artwork on them. It's silly fantasy style artwork, uh, and there is a lot of it. So that's one of the things that you need to realize in this game. There's a lot. So the game comes with this plastic tray here, in which you'll put everything, and it fits, except uh, you better never turn this box sideways or you're going to be extremely unhappy. The biggest problem, though, for the game, I think, is the special powers of the factions. You have this huge sheet here, and the nice thing about the sheet is it tells you every special power for each faction, but honestly, you're only going to use eight of them over the course of the game. I would have preferred these been printed on cards, and then you would just put those cards next to the board. Um, and then you could just look at that card to know what the special abilities were. Not a big thing, but I will tell you that looking through this and also remembering what all the different things do, and for that, you have to you know, look at a page in a rule book, and this is what all the different spaces do. And for the longest time, you know, when I first talked about Swamp, I, that made you lose a point. I was like, oh, it's definitely this. That looks like you lose a point. No, that's just impassable. This makes you lose a point. Oh, okay. And so there's just minor things like that. I felt like this game has a lot going on, although the game itself isn't that complex. Now, the basic concept of Claim Kingdoms is one that I think is fine. The idea of putting out tiles and placing workers on them. In one of my favorite games from way back when called Castle, has a very similar idea. In that game, you were putting cards down in the castle, and you would put down a card that made it go back into someone else's hand. Now, one of the things with castle, and the same thing is in essence here, is that these kind of games tend to be more strategic with fewer players, which makes this more strategic with two, and more chaotic with more, which makes this fairly chaotic with four players. Uh, so you need to go into it knowing that that's going to happen. It's just they're very different games, I feel. Because in a four-player game, it could be a, you, one of your cards is gone, someone took one of your followers off. And there's definitely a lot of take that powers amongst the different species in this game. So keep that in mind. I don't dislike that, actually. In fact, I probably prefer the more tactical nature of the two-player game. But I don't mind the mix, uh, mixing up in the chaotic nature when there's more players involved. So that's one of the things. But where this game kind of turns too sharply for me is what I alluded to when I talked about the components. And that's that it's frankly too much. It really is. There's too much going on here in Claim Kingdoms. It is a game uh, which has a ton of different species in it. There is lots of different factors on the boards. You're watching everything. And it feels like every time I put a card, it's like, all right, where am I putting the card? I need to check the board. I need to check the, the power here. I need to then decide which card I'm going to take. And it's, it's a little bit analysis paralysis for a game that's not that heavy. This game is a light game masquerading as a heavy game. And it's definitely one where the sum of its parts is less than all of them. There's too much going on. I prefer it without the boards, but then taking the boards out loses that area controlling the boards. And so, you mixing these things together, uh, again, I, I'm just coming back to that, there's too much, there's too much. But that's how, that's how I feel about it. I feel like the game is a streamlined, decent game that has just had too much stuff added here. Now, for some people, that may be a blessing. You may look at this and go, that's amazing. I'm never going to play the same game twice. And I don't disagree. That's a positive feature of the game. I think the positive feature is the art and all. But I will posit that when it's all out there on the table, it is confusing. The iconography on the cards is not intuitive. Having to be constantly looking at this the whole game is not tremendously fun. So this sheet here, for example, is compatible to the one in Small World. But the difference in Small World is I look at it once and I know it. That's my, that's my race that I'm controlling for a long time. Here, every time I get a card, I have to look at these. And yes, you may remember them, but also many of the powers are similar. So you'll say, oh, the giant's the one who kills the card. 
No, the giant's the one who kills the follower. Oh, wait, hang on. I need to rethink what I'm doing. So I think this will be somewhat divisive. I think there's going to be a lot of people out there who really do enjoy it, and that's fine. I'm saying for myself, I found it to be almost exhausting to just be constantly looking at this and that. And then the scoring at the end, this is one of those games where I have no idea who's winning until the end. And that's okay, but it, it just felt like, huh, I never felt in this game that anyone outplayed anybody else. I simply felt like they just managed to pee, peer through the chaos a little better than the rest of us. Maybe that's what you want, and if so, get Claim Kingdom's Royal Edition. For me, I'm going to pass on this one for now. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, just too much going on.